Rebecca, so what developments are we seeing with some key distressed firms like H&A or, or formerly stressed companies like Huarong? Well, with H&A, as you say, we're seeing some kind of key developments, potentially, uh, with those strategic investors coming in. Um, sources also telling us on Friday they had this very lengthy uh, creditor meeting with H&A, um, went over multiple hours. Um, of course, it's such a complex restructuring. This is one of the first firms that really ran into trouble after this kind of debt-fueled spending spree. So it will be a really kind of complex and interesting, uh, interesting events to watch there. Um, when it comes to Huarong, we know Huarong is uh, potentially suing another investment company in China to accelerate the principal on this loan payment. I think that is a little bit more within expectation um, for us. I, of course, uh, Huarong now has this potential of a state-led bailout coming in. But until that kind of fully comes through, and as Huarong kind of moves to kind of uh, you know streamline its business, we will sort of see these sort of events and these potential disputes popping up here and there. How is Beijing's crackdown on property affecting distressed debt in China? Yes, well, we've seen another key development um, with property developer um, uh, late late last week and over this weekend with a Chinese uh, uh, a Chinese property firm, a Singaporean developer that was invested in a Chinese property firm, Chongqing Sincere, has withdrawn fully its stake in uh, in Sincere, um, and that comes after the firm has sort of ran into trouble a couple of months ago, said to have missed payments on on certain of its debts, um, and and really off the back of the kind of three red lines crackdown and this kind of crackdown on liquidity, this uh, Chongqing Sincere has really struggled to kind of make good on its debt payments and reassure investors that it's not going but can sort of continue to survive. Um, and it does, I think, show some of the vulnerabilities where uh, foreign firms may have invested or may have significant exposure to some of these smaller Chinese property firms.